This is really it. This is the podcast. You know what's funny is somehow just holding this up, I realized that you guys are holding up what are clearly, obviously, beer cans, or at worst, you know, beer <laughs> cans. At best, like maybe a soda or something. And this, because it's in a red plastic cup, looks like it's something far, far worse than that. It's more yeah. sinister. Yeah. I think it's drugs. Yeah, it does. This is water. This is just cold, hard water. This well, is like you shouldn't drink water out drinking there, water. first of all. Why don't you but use I glass? happen to be drinking from a... Well, drinking because glass. this was available, and I started with it, and now I'm sticking with it because the water's still in there. Um, so, All right. but like, it does look far, far more nefarious because of Well, the what about this? Uh, like I was drinking a Modelo earlier and I had a lime in there, but now I've got an IPA and tradition dictates that I'm not supposed to have the lime, but I want a lot, like, no I really enjoyed the lime in my beer earlier today. It's hard yeah. for me to, you know, can I have lime with IPA? I- no. I think you can do whatever the hell you want. It's your because beer. I got the glass with the lime. Should we do this as like a live? Yes. Humanity oh. will learn, I guess. Mm-hmm. I dig Let's, it. Maybe I'll do half of it. the beer and just see what happens first. See if it's ruined or not. Yeah. What yeah. I would, what I would like, love is for the lime to just like fire out of the glass. Yeah, to the exactly. <laughs> like oh shit! Really, yeah. Like Mentos and a Diet Coke. Yeah, it might end up being that way. All right, should we? Should I taste it? Yeah, please. Yeah, you yeah, ready for that? Is it? A we're all sitting on the edge of our seats. Okay. Right now. I'm, I'm dying to know how. how this is how you get a lot of uh, views, click throughs, and watch it. throughs and this stuff. Yeah, this is going to be the Lime IPA test going all around the internet next. Um, I don't know, man. It's hard to IPA? say. Is the lime presence the like lime PA noticeable or It's kind of hard to tell. I mean, maybe it is, but then again, it's a floral. You know, it's a floral yeah. bet beer in the first place. Which they often are. I right. Oh, I just don't know what to think. Hmm. Is this good, bad, worse, better, the same, neutral? Well, you might need some more time because a lot it hasn't had a lot of time to kind of tear down the... I think what I can say conclusively is it does not add to the IPA what it does to the other kind of beer, like the Mexican style That's key. beer. That's key. It's just not... It's not the same. If it is good, it's not the same, nonetheless. So, yeah, I get that. There you go. That registers right in the logic box. <laughs> yeah, so good. It's That's where it strikes. It stretches me right in my logic box. It's a lot like uh, when they're going to destroy the Death Star. You know, favorite. Oh, yes. right there. Uh, they are we're actually rehashing the Star Wars now. Oh, getting geared up for the new guy. No, we're no just starting from scratch because she's unaware of where are you starting? The particulars the of the history at New Hope. What's the order. Okay. Uh, you so. didn't do. I didn't do chronological. I don't think. A, I think that it feels right to see it in this way. Yeah. And I don't think it's that big of a grasp to go back a generation and then have a sequence of if stories there. And then go right. forward a generation and have a sequence of stories there. Like that's not that big of a deal. We can get our heads around that and yeah. put together how it all works. So <clears throat> there's a part of that that uh, really works well for how I felt the story evolve. Right. And I think it's also nice to see it in the sense of like since it's so geared around being this big cinematic event with crazy CGI and stuff like that. Like seeing the progression of how the movies have grown. Um, which got my gourd a little bit watching um, A New Hope because there's so many cut-ins that I'd forgotten about from the late 90s edition when George Lucas like did the THX remake and then added in a bunch of like background set things and little cut-tos between scenes that had no effect on the story, obviously, but we're like, oh, that's there wasn't a skeleton of a big like dinosaur thing on the sand dune by C three PO when he sees the sand people for the the raiders or whatever for the first time. But there was in this one, like it's not in this seventy seven edition or whatever, but it is in this one. And there's so many other like weird cut twos that if you're looking for it, they really stand out. Um, so I hate to, like I I hate identifying with groups that i didn't choose to be in but 
I have to identify with the group of people who does not know anything about Star Wars. Um, what in the f- actual? I know. Like, I've, <clears throat> I've seen a couple of them, I think, and I okay. did not care at all. And I, yeah. it's not that I had anything yeah. against yeah. them. It's yeah, just yeah. at the time, yeah. it just didn't, it didn't connect with me. No, you're allowed to have back to it. Feeling, opinion. So, like, but the problem is having no real points of, like, I know the ca- the basic characters. I know, you know, Luke and Leia and whatever. But I don't know, like, the real details of any of the backstories or how it all connects. I don't we couldn't tell you at all which order the movies chronologically go in at all. Um, I definitely couldn't tell you who is alive at the end of the story and who's not. Um, and so listening to these descriptions from that perspective is just always funny to me because so many people understand, I'm sure, everything you just said. But to me, it is complete nonsense. Like, I have no clue what any of that references. Yeah. I kind of, like, and my, like, my baby brother's it, super into Star Wars and I, so I kind of remember what who Boba Fett is, but I never, I don't remember ever seeing that character in a movie. I don't have any oh, yeah. idea. Well, oh, he's uh, in it. He's you in know, it. as food for thought, uh, Bjorn, you've only watched A New Hope episode four recently, <clears throat> and half of Empire Strikes Back. Okay, all right, because uh, there are super fans out there who have theories on different orders in which you can yeah. watch. I did some research oh, on okay. that as well prior to launching this new Wow, things. you're so. dedicated, I can see. Because there is something <laughs> called the Machete Order, which uh-huh. would be watching four, five, two, three, yeah. six, seven, eight, and then nine. And they completely don't want you to watch The Phantom Menace. That's not even on there. It's not in yeah. there. Yeah. yeah, they cut that right out with the Machete, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. Phantom Menace uh, is one? Yeah. yeah, one is actually four, though, because it started originally with the fourth one through the sixth. Fourth, fifth, and sixth. Yeah. And then they released the first through the third. Those are the ones that came out in the 70s. Yeah. yeah and then early four, 80s. five, and six. Okay. Yeah, and then the 90s and early 2000s brought us the tragic first three that just sucked. Uh, I mean, you can try to make them okay, but they just suck. Like, Like, there's a couple of dope parts about them. You know, like, there's some really cool, like, when they show the clone army or certain spaceships and things are all right. But at the end of the day, it's, it's There's some not pretty that. badass fights, too. Like, Yoda's fight scene is pretty great. It's all right. Uh, it's, <clears throat> I, I, to me, it, I, and, and it's like what you were saying about the cut-ins that you were disappointed with. Yeah. It's yeah. like, I wasn't. You know, when they did the original Star Wars films, and it's not that they stopped doing this, but there was something where they uh, they use real things for their props, you know? So, like, yeah. R2-D2 or something might be an actual, like, shop vac or something that they, they for whatever reason, they felt that repurposing real-world things was was part of the, the way they did just the, the aesthetic. Yeah. And that wasn't about i mean yes they used nice effects and all that but uh, to me that magic that real depth behind things where it's like not just a cylinder of plastic made for no reason but one that already has a couple of weird like you know like little features to it or whatever that was way more important than the fucking special effects and having like oh did you see that explosion it looked really like an explosion in space would look like that all was there and impressive but I don't feel like that's what most people were like fans of in a way that they should make it so much better and more. And I remember, I think it was when the newer ones came out, when it was seven and eight that I saw, or maybe one of the even side editions with Han Solo. And it was back to a little grimier look. Like the first three, like the machines look like they've been in use like right. pretty pretty much everybody's stuff except for vader and his shell and his super shiny helmet is like looking like it's a little bit ragtag and battle worn and like you know you you see it's got a realness to it which i think lent it because it was so sci-fi you, yeah. you know you, he's asking the 
the people to jump, you know, thousands of years into the future, into a galaxy that we travel around in and navigate and these crazy, like make huge jumps, but then grounded in the realism of it's in use. And that, yeah. I think that gave a lot of feeling to it uh, in the first few films. And they definitely jumped away from that. There's a lot more shiny, glittery stuff, especially yeah. in the first three. Yeah. And, you know, <clears throat> the, I like the more recent ones. And it's ironic that it's just all George Lucas's fault that those three suck. It was like, it is, yeah, it was Meshach. It was like um, if the lead singer in the band had always think thought he was like the smartest and the best person in the group. And if only he could have his vision realized. And then he got his wish and like everybody in the band got basically pushed out and he brought in his own and but he was like i'm so good at like my synth and everything else that he like turned it into a one-man band or something and then yeah. it turned into a whole different kind of music and the only thing about it that it was a connection was that they used the same name and had the same dude um yeah but yeah i gotta tell you man it's it's a real uh unfortunate thing when that guy got the wheel uh and it's good that he lost it he certainly made some money on the way, it looks like. <laughs> he made a couple bucks. Was, yeah. Oh, gosh. But the thing is, I always have to give my I, Isaac Asimov shout-outs whenever Absolutely. we talk about Star Wars. <clears throat> and that's a computation that sadly is missed on most people. Most people heap all of this creative genius and capacity on George Lucas. What I'd love to give George Lucas a lot of credit for is taking this really grand brilliant idea from Isaac Asimov and distilling a few parts to really detail and highlight and kind of creating a, 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 his own twist on that universe view to own it himself. You know, it's like, I think you read more sci-fi than me by far, so I have to defer. But on the other hand, I've always thought uh, it didn't seem to me like it was just like a copy of the foundation. It seemed to me like I assume that the foundation influenced sci-fi stories and writing all so much that you'd be hard pressed to find a modern sci-fi that didn't end Absolutely. up. Absolutely. But like, just like, so follow me down this road. Okay. So all right. You've got a future galaxy wide empire. Yeah that is going through throes of rebellion and a potential looming dark age when this emperor dude takes over and runs shit into the ground where he's blowing up planets, right? So uh -huh. far, it's roughly the scale of the podcast. So you also yeah, have, say, yeah, first in, episode. As, in Asimov, a galaxy-wide republic that is potentially looming on a dark age, being predicted by somebody, who then sets up a salvation, a foundation to save or bring back knowledge after a thousand year period for this now crumbling empire. And sets up a secret other school to like do all this crazy psychology mind bending stuff throughout the cosmos that's like the Jedi. Except they've got lightsabers and there's a little more detail in the way that their pantheon works, et cetera, et cetera. Like, there's a lot of real big tie-ins. Han Solo, Han Pritchard. Um, there's, like, time and time again, the further I go into it, like, the influence is so strong. And, I don't know, like... They were both written on paper. Absolutely, yeah. Stories. Yeah. Um, the the reference to Earth is basically non-existent until at, later in the Foundation you get into that, but to begin with, no, um, you're just out there, which in uh, a crazy which, galaxy. Uh, which character do you think you identify with the most, knowing the full story? Like the, as a kid, I remember yeah, yeah thinking like that this is a story about Luke Skywalker. And Luke Skywalker's, like, you know, universe, basically. And he's the kind of, he's the main point of all this. And then it sort of morphs in my head, again, very knowing very little about this, to being kind of sort of about 
this larger you know universe story that's less about one yeah. character yeah um but it's kind of like Luke Skywalker, Darth Vader, and Han Solo, and like everybody else is caught in between in my mind. Is there a, a now that you know the whole story, that you've seen the whole picture, that you know how it connects or whatever? Is is does that change? Is it still about that central story? You mean the four, five, six part of the story? Yeah, the whole thing. Like now is the whole thing really now that you know the full story. Who is it really about? Is there a central? It's character? always it's been about Luke for sure. It's always about Luke. It's always okay. about Luke, yeah. Even in one, two, and three, it's about his dad. But it's Which is about just another him. Yeah. Uh, I'm just ready to inform you, Buren, that progress continues apparently on the Foundation TV series for Apple TV. Okay. Uh, on oh. wow, this was updated literally today. Oh, wow. uh, film crews were spotted Breaking shooting news. a neighborhood street scene in New Rochelle, New York, where debris was scattered all over the road and adjacent yards, and cars parked on the street were cut in half and on fire. Uh, so that's literally <laughs> today. It sounds like on October twenty second, <clears throat> it was announced that Lee Pace and Jared Harris were cast to be Brother Day and Harry Seldon, respectively. In addition, David Goyer was confirmed as the sole official showrunner for the series. Boom. So why on earth is there filming in like a neighborhood on earth setting? Well, this is all breaking news, dude. I mean, we got so much going I on. I don't like that. Each That's a twist of the story. Oh, it could mean anything. Maybe like who knows what the relevance of that is. I don't like oh, it. Oh, it said a neighborhood. Doesn't tickle me right. Street scene. I mean, that doesn't. With cars? There's no cars in the foundation, but I'm just saying, uh, who knows? Maybe they're just testing. Or saying what the foundation takes place long ago or in the future. In way in the future. So maybe they're saying like way after this apocalypse, maybe it's a montage and it shows a burning car uh, for a half a second at the very intro of the show or something. I don't and know. The robots fucked everything up. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I'm just saying. Uh, I'm just very excited. <laughs> I love that. I loved. I just love the way that that appe- appeased Bjorn. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, like, totally. Okay, okay fine. <laughs> right, fine. If you're doing that, I'm cool with it. <laughs> well, because it it fits into the Asimov universe, right? So he goes oh, through like fit. the <clears throat> iRobot scenario, and you have the robot wars, gotcha. okay. and then that falls into the Foundation series, and he has preludes and woven stories that move. In between those those times, um, and then the time you get to the foundation, the idea of Earth is almost like nobody really thinks or talks about. It. It's a hidden archival idea, and even then, the the truth of where Earth really is has been scrubbed, and so gotcha. they've taken it out of the text. They've taken it out of the maps. They've taken it. Da, da, da. So yeah, yeah, it's it's a cool <laughs> subplot topic that's in the right. in the foundation at the last four right. like last few books. Right. Is that is that where we're going, you guys? Do you think that's where we're like ultimately is that where we're heading? We're just gonna be eaten by the fucking robots and it's over. Yeah. Well, hopefully we'll survive and the robots will help us survive. Like the thing is, there'll be robots that'll still help us kill the robots that are trying to kill us. It's not okay, gonna be so all as, robots against us. It's gonna be some I, robots. I feel like that tipping point has already been crossed. That we've talked about this before, but like the artificial intelligence taking you over tipping point. Yeah. And there's a very specific threshold that I was talking to a friend about the other day that occurred to both of us. Um, there, so corporations are already people legally. They can claim all kinds of rights as people. Algorithms are created and owned by corporate entities. And when the algorithm does something that is nefarious or hurtful or destructive in some way, does the corporation now bear liability for the algorithm or are we likely to be going more into a situation where the algorithm gets its own personhood too? Right? Uh, we are, okay, maybe. Here's where, here's where it could get interesting. Facebook, for example, says our advertising model is an algorithm. No one's choosing how these ads get posted. No one's choosing what's being manipulated, manipulative or not. It's just an algorithm, right? And it's been their argument from the 
from day one, especially as regards to hacking in 2016 election. Um, that's the same argument that Amazon would use to know too much information about individuals yeah. all over the country. Um, same argument that Apple or any Google of these other, other manufacturers would use. So I go back to, have we already created the precedent for that argument by allowing these corporations <clears throat> to make that argument now? Maybe. Uh, you never know. Very possibly, yeah. But I so think France for think... the end of that war is already dead. Well, yeah, maybe, but I, I'm not 100% sure on the algorithms being people, but maybe. What I would say, though, uh, the most likely thing is that the Earth itself is a living being, and therefore maybe the Earth at a certain point is going to kick in to destroy all these things, robots and people, everybody, because they're destroying me, and then the robots are going to have to say to the people, Oh shit, son! Earth is gonna kill us all. We gotta get out of here together. And then there's an alliance between the people and the robots to get off of Earth because it's a ticking time bomb. And from there, cyborg, I AI cyborgia. Was there a Matt Damon movie about yeah. that? Yeah, yeah, I like that. Um, are you thinking think... like Ely Elysium, maybe? Yeah, I think that was it. Well, they live up on the cool. moon or something like that. Where they're yeah. like living in this like floating thing with with the robots as their best friends. Mm -hmm. They got robot Damn. pals. I mean, yeah, they're like you got to assume you have robot pals. They're like kind of they're um is it android where they're like half machine cyborg. They, they're cyborg. Yeah, they have like you can get cyborg like body parts and you know whatever. Yeah, that's, that's cool. cool. That's sexy. Uh, I'm into that. Yeah. I think we're headed I think we're headed to a place where go go gadget yeah, mm -hmm. either that happens or maybe it's just all over. Or yeah, so yeah. I mean, to that to that topic, like I think, frankly, I I'm on the fence about how Mother Earth feels about us and our robots and all of our pissing in the sea type of shit. Because well said, the directive of nature, like, has always been to establish, you know. A, the greatest and most for yourself. Uh, our particular brand of nature has done it crazily and way too effectively and abused the shit out of this earth. But it's still, we're still nature. We still are animals that four million years ago looked a heck of a lot like chimpanzees. <clears throat> and I mean, you mean the, that, that would mean earth wouldn't want to shrug, shake us out of here. Earth's maybe down for us to be interstellar and have to figure out our shit and spread her funguses and well, bacteria that she's that also might... spent a billion years incubating all over the fucking galaxy. That is very likely. Uh, and she's got to give us a gentle nudge Point. with yeah. the whole, uh, uh oh, world is done. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, it is. Maybe, I mean, we don't want, we'd, it'd be nice to live in a future where we have a viable atmosphere here on Earth. Like, that would be beautiful. It's overrated. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we need to worry about climate change. I, I don't think that that's the question mark. But I don't think that the vendetta is out for humans in the way what if, that... No, it's just like you said. What if it's Mama's not a vendetta? What if it's, yeah, what if instead she's just trying to get you out of the nest, you know, so you can fly for the first time? Uh, that, and sometimes that yeah. takes a little push, you know? It's scary. feels like you're being murdered. Uh, but it was growth. That or what about this? What if the glacial, uh, the ice age cyclical nature that we've seen over the last several hundred thousand years, I can't remember the name of the uh, scientist, but there's this cycle that's named after him. There. Okay. There's a new conjecture I just saw a video about recently that says that what if there's a dead sun in our system and that we're actually a like binary that. system mm -hmm. and where our sun with its planets in tow is looping around another dead or dying but supermassive sun that spins us around and therefore we're moving through different parts of our own local space region and influenced by other galactic phenomena around us that makes like the processionary cycle they say is like 26,000 years long um, have a little adjustments that are needed because we're moving 
parallel to its greater scope on this other loop. People, I, I'm sure it's just like the flat earth, a whole bag of wind. Um, but I love the fact that it's 2020 and we've got wild ass ideas about how the universe operates. Yeah. We still don't know. I was reading an article recently saying that, you know, the determination of the actual shape of the universe has been something that people have been pondering since the beginnings of astrophysics. And one of the conjectures that's easy to think about is like a plane, like something spread out and moving, you know, um, and we can't imagine anything infinite. So either it's expanding in like and continuing to expand and has since the Big Bang or there's some sort of edge to this field if you will. Um, and there's a new model that's saying it's very likely it's a bubble that it's expanded in this bubular way. And like, bubular. Ev- but now you can potentially travel in it like a, um, like you would in a globe. So moving through space can take whole different new, what they're basically saying it's distorted and our whole view frame is distorted because we're seeing inside of like more of a spherical shape. Um, anyway, interesting. I mean, I, I'm, I'm for all of that. Stuff, I, you, you sent me on a Google search for bubular that I was just, I, I don't, I don't mm. necessarily recommend and it's it. A product. <laughs> it's where I went in my head. Um, <laughs> I can only imagine so. what came up. <laughs> I was like, bubular, that's gotta be its own thing. I bet that's like a whole corner of the internet. <laughs> and uh, it is. It is. It is indeed. A scary corner. <laughs> Do we want to know? No, it's uh, fine. Well, it's fine. It's just it's a corner that you'd probably expect to find what you what you find there. Uh, well, I would always think <laughs> that you could name a product Bubular, and it could be a sparkling water. Bubular tea. Yeah. Oh. Bubular. Bubular uh, tea. Yeah, let me get a Bubular. Mm. That sounds like a refreshing drink to me. Uh, like there's certain things you get... can't name with that. Like you couldn't name like your really fancy knife company, Bubular. Bubular, yeah. Probably knife. like just, that doesn't work. It's not knife sharp. Right. Bubular is not a sharp yeah. word. Right. I don't you think know? any sort of like like plane company would either also want to be called right. Bubular. Yeah. Like, bubular, oh, we Airlines. Build bubular Airlines. <laughs> yeah. Fly on the Bubular jet. Uh, you never know. <laughs> Bubbles float and stuff, you know. Yeah, but anyway, hey. Earth, Earth, you know, it's it's on the last days because it wants us out. I think that's what it is. It's gonna knock mm-hmm. us off the edge of the flat Earth, and we're gonna just mm-hmm. do a swan dive into destiny. You know who I think should to... fall off the edge of the flat Earth? Uh, oh. Wait, let me. Can Everybody I? Can I answer this? There's an edge to the flat Earth. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh that would be a funny thing. The irony of them all falling off of their own edge and all of us being the ones who survive. <laughs> that's pretty good, isn't it? Because that's it. what you're yeah. proposing, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That they're right, but they get killed for it. No, oh, I no just, I was, I was it's imagining, I was yeah. hoping they'd think like the nearest big cliff or something was actually the end of the world. Uh, like right. the cliffs of Dover. Mm-hmm. Just very lemming kind of yeah vibe well that yes. makes sense but i Did appreciate your approach thank you I'm assuming you're talking yes. to me yeah i am always yeah not always but now <laughs> when, when it's positive i'll just assume. yeah misha only gets like downers and resentment <laughs> right. like guilt yeah. trips I'll tell how you. come you haven't Meshack. Just, well, what do you got, Meshack? You I just want like the you're, attention. However, you sounded like it. you were ready to. Uh... Um, I was just curious if, like, something you said maybe pull up predict it, and now I can't remember what it was. But now that I'm looking at predict it, I was going to ask you guys what you remembered the price being for Trump being impeached in his first term. Uh, I, I mean, I bought just... some of those at uh, I don't know something and. Well, you know, like what was interesting to me is you can see the the, the changes over time, uh-huh, right? Um, and you can see the ninety day trend. Yeah. Okay. So the the price is less interesting. It's seventy seven cents right now to buy, um, but on August sixteenth, it was twenty cents. Oh. And its closing price yesterday was seventy nine cents. So what's interesting is that on September 24th, 
it spiked from somewhere in the teens. No, in August it was less than ten cents. Sorry, but on on September twenty fourth, it spiked from like eighteen cents to seventy eight cents. What happened on September twenty fourth? Well, uh, I believe the they released the yeah the memo or. The the, was, the the supposed the transcript thing, you know? Yeah, the transcript for the call was released. But it's not actually a transcript. It's like, just like a kind of script. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. So the, the script of the call, though, the infamous call. Yeah. Um, I guess that makes sense. A tan Some people script. will say that's not the whole thing, you know? There's more to it. That's just stuff. I mean, at this point, like... I was talking to a friend about this today. After everything we've seen and after everything we've heard, this impeachment vote was still basically straight down party lines. Now, everybody that's responded to it has, as far as I can tell, unless you guys have an update, has responded according to party lines. Um, Republicans have defended Trump. Democrats have attacked him. No one's really crossing over. Um, I'm curious if... Like, if that's still holding true, and if it is, do we see a way that that might actually start breaking? How does that, well, how does that I mean, mind actually so, break? So it's an interesting timing of the question because it's, uh, you know, yeah. today was the first day of the televised hearings. Mm -hmm. So today is the first day that, at least in some people's mind, uh, people were paying attention to it. So I don't know. I think it's going to be to be seen. The vote they had a couple of weeks ago was, you know, the proceeding with the televised and public hearings and what the rules or whatever were going to be and so on. Uh, and that was uh, two Democrats voted against it uh, and all the Republicans voted against it. Um, but it, of course, won anyway. And so now... Yeah, I don't know. It, it's, Are these the same two Democrats who voted against impeachment? Oh, that's who I'm, I mean, Aren't that's... They? Okay, oh, got it. That's the only vote that's been held on okay. this matter, so that's those guys, yeah. Uh, but I think, you know, it seems like it, there's be a, there'd be a good argument to be made that says people get it already and have made up their mind and there's nothing to change and no matter what happens today or the rest of the week or month, it's going to be the same. And then there's another argument that's like, no, a lot of people, this isn't something they pay a lot of attention to. Um, and now the type of sound bites and clips that will be on the news and that they're just not going to be able to avoid are going to make them realize this guy was super shady. So, I mean, I don't know. Uh, I don't think the Republicans are making themselves look very good. Uh, it certainly doesn't seem, you know, they're just like kind of pointing at other people and you know yeah. it's like it's just it looks very juvenile i think very immature so uh to me i would think people are <laughs> but then again who knows it's like this guy's such an obvious fucking crook and slime ball that if you can't see that already i don't know maybe you're fucking well it may not it may not turn, yeah. I, I agree it may not turn out to be a matter of seeing it or not they they like they might not be willing to look. They might not be interested at all in knowing well, the truth about I mean, it. I, Lindsey I, I Graham think, is not interested. Yeah, but I mean, you're not looking at changing Lindsey Graham's mind because you know that he's right, exactly. here for the the uh, pony show and he's just gonna play the part and get rid, ridden around all day. Um, but the the way that I think the Democrats are hoping this works out, obviously, is that enough public clamor comes about because of what's made public now that these guys are looking at their jobs a little more seriously because mm -hmm. they know that's the only thing that might potentially sway a vote in their way when it gets to the south the, to the senate is who's gonna think about their next election campaign at home and if they go to bat for trump or not there's enough states that are close look at the last gubernatorial races and how that shook shook out in kentucky i mean kentucky right. voted de democratic governor and that's that's mcconnell state you know what i mean like yeah he's he's got to be sweating a little bit seeing that change uh and so many counties that had gone so strong trump prior flipped 
to vote blue this last time. And right. that's got to be pretty stark and shocking for them, knowing that's a, all over the country just waiting to happen. Um, so I think I think the de- Democrat play with this patience shit is is OK if they're if we're going to get a Senate vote that actually has some a couple dissenters on the Senate side. Um is it three that would we'd need, Rob? No, I think you need like seventeen or something. Yeah, like, in the Senate. Oh, cause yeah, it because be 60, it's, you gotta, yeah, it's sixty-seven or something votes or whatever. So. Um, oh, is it two thirds, not sixty forty? Yeah, yeah, I think it's two thirds or something. What so. is the smoking gun at this point? Well, uh, I think you could say there may or may not be an actual Proof transcript. Proof of the quid pro quo. Is what I well, first of all, well, you said what would be the smoking gun? So, because that that there's already been kind of proof of that, but right. people are people are like, well, you know, uh, yeah. but I think I think more interestingly, supposedly there's uh, another transcript, like a real word for word transcript, uh, and some of the witnesses had said that uh, the one that was released is missing some key things. So, first of all, there may be a document um, that shows more on the call than happened i think that would be like a smoking gun of sorts because the fact that it existed and this other one was put out would look pretty shady i would think you know but then again these people are not the smartest uh and then i think another smoking gun well i don't know i mean like like basically there could be a tape you know there there might be Right. Uh, actual audio of the call which would take the whole like you well, know framing it in one way or reading into it you know a lot less easy and i to think do. right i think taylor said today that there was another phone call the day after that phone call with um with the ukrainian president to sondland while they were yeah. in kiev yeah and talking about the investigations and things like that directly with Trump where Sondland called Trump himself from his yeah, from a restaurant and a restaurant in front of some of the aides or whatnot. Yeah. And they overheard Trump on the other end and them talking about investigations. Yeah. Um, so like there's potentially a hell of a lot of damning evidence that, I mean, is the Senate, if, if we're talking about a trial, like, and there's a subpoena for a piece of evidence that's held in, who like whose archive has that like does the white house control all of its own data or is one of our intelligence agencies have some insight into that like, uh well where all that's the all agencies stored? are are you know run by the executive branch yeah. so anything in any executive agency is subject to being covered up or destroyed while a court battle, you know, because I yeah, think the exactly. Congress has every right to demand we, it, we want a copy of the tape if there's a tape. But if there was a tape, what's the likelihood there still is a tape by the time, you know, because I mean, from well, the perspective I mean, like, of these guys, what, what do they have to lose? You know, it's like, well, you destroyed the tape that makes you look bad. Well, we already look really bad. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like they've already kind of given up the whole like appearances matter thing so yeah yeah well right what and do- i think from a, like when you talk about that um the potential for evidence especially as it relates to like the, the difference between white house records or you know pentagon records or what have you like that i have very little faith that for one thing the white house or the you know any of these departments or offices or whatever um, or branches are organized enough, just considering the people we're talking about, to be <clears throat> to to be really stringent on rules around technology and documents and backups yeah. and et cetera. Yeah. So, <clears throat> for one thing, I don't expect them to have a very good system. I don't expect the people that are using it to use it very well. And um, I don't expect them to be able to tell you, matter of fact, uh, if the thing still exists or if it has been destroyed. I don't think that those things necessarily are knowable. 
because of the size of the place, the number of people, the number of evolutions of technology that they're dealing with all the time, and the number now that we know of different parties at play in the White House who all want to screw each other over. Well, yeah, exactly. Who's to say it isn't on <clears throat> this database, but somebody didn't shuffle it off onto a little flash drive and move it into their own personal computer? Like, I find that highly likely and and a compelling thought considering the way this White House has been operating from the get-go. I wouldn't be surprised if there's a dozen people who want to be a mole of some sort and have been ferreting away information from the get-go anyways. Well, first of all, we all have phones in our pockets, so it's completely reasonable and logical and possible that someone could have had a recording device in any number of conversations oh, yeah. with Trump, especially considering the security that we've seen in this White House. Like, they can claim whatever they want about what you're supposed to be able to do, but you can get a recording, a video recording device that looks like an ink pen for $20 on Amazon. It would not be that hard to sneak past most systems with yeah. some if you wanted to. And if you work at the goddamn White House and there is treason afoot, you might be able to spend 20 bucks on Amazon. So I don't think that it's out of the question that all kinds of people have documents and evidence of all kinds of things yeah. in this environment. What I'm curious about is at this point, um, like it's what number one, the way the the parties and the media have treated the concept of a whistleblower. Why would anyone blow a whistle? Well, yeah, they're That's fucking right. that up, right? You you definitely don't want to put yourself in that position. Number two, the fact that people like um, who is the John whatever his name is with the mustache who won't testify. Oh, now. John He's Bolton. Got a book deal. Yeah, because he's got a fucking book deal. Like, what is more American about that? Have you guys heard the story? Uh, so, not the book I hadn't deal heard part. that, but yeah. Like, he's Brilliant. postponing testifying, and we find out that he's got a book deal where he's spilling all the beans in the deal. He's going to get it. paid first before he goes to Congress. Yeah. Like, what's more American than that on, like, those sides of the coin? Is so that... good. Oh, God. So Bolton. <laughs> yeah. Love, love Johnny Mustachio Bolton. Um what about a world where we elect, like, let's distill maybe seven agencies and lump a few other agencies in with them for to round out the executive side of government's arms, right? And then vote for seven agency heads every four years and one steering director slash president to help navigate them all. Okay, they, time out. Some can come from... Yeah, go ahead. I think uh, maybe this is the answer to the hidden question because you've got the executive branch, which is meant to execute the laws, right? To enforce and execute the laws that are written by Congress. And whenever there's yeah. a question or, you know, that kind of thing, it goes to the judiciary. So you've got, you know, the House of Representatives and the Senate. You've got the presidency and the white house yeah you've got the agencies that everyone on this trump thing is talking about uh deep state and all that yeah and then you got the courts but if the agencies became the direct voice of the people like if we exactly. or or one of the branches like let's say even give the house and the senate like one of them deals with it and then a new chamber is built for direct representation of the people. And like we've talked about before, maybe it's on a jury duty kind of system. So just like every every quarter or something, there's a whole new set of X hundred representatives okay. pulled proportionately in some way. But they're just Joe Schmo who didn't even run. You know what I mean? It's just literally like registered voters just like they might get called to jury duty. And, and you can almost assume at one point in your life, you'll be going to D.C. for a quarter to rep your district. You know what I mean? Like, there's rules around it, but you'll do that. So then, like what you're saying, those branches could be run maybe by, like, a deliberative body like the Senate or something that's not so big that if they got to fire someone or if something else happens... Uh, uh. You know what I mean? Like they could be a little bit more nimble, but yet not so small that they're just like tyrannical. I don't know. Yeah. 
Well, I'm also thinking about like being able to elect the heads and have, say, for instance, if the head of the Department of Defense was somebody who was an electable official. Yeah. And you could come in and claim a party, but you'd probably do best to run as an independent and be from the military machine. Like those would probably be successful people who would run for. You know, well, would this person Secretary ultimately Department answer Department. then to the president, though? Like, so the people elect the sec defense, but that person still has to faithfully execute and follow any and all orders of the president. Is that this what is what I was what I was thinking is that then you round it into a little bit of a council to where everybody's got some say and those seven have a vote of one and the president has a vote of two and he's the tiebreaker, you know, with his double vote. Um, so if, you know, everybody has some big element that wants to be brought to that council, uh, like going to war or whatnot, if it's not brought before Congress, if it's an executively decided action of war, which there are countless of these days, um, then the, the council meets. I just think I also I think that, you know, this guy refers to himself as such a stable genius all the time. And like there's a big machine that runs all of the elements to the executive side of our government. But it is a really big, cumbersome machine with the agencies, with your interaction with the press, with thinking about getting a job again next time. Like even if this was a really great, capable, kind person, I would think damn, that's, it's a big fucking job. Like I did with Obama. Like that's, damn, that's, damn. Yeah, you're doing it. You're not playing golf all the time, you know? But like, I think that for it to be really successful, being a little bit more compartmentalized about the task set that we lump into that executive, you know, group could be useful. It could be really nice to be able to vote on well, a, I like the idea of, a of secretary of health. For- yeah, I like the idea of voting for department heads. Uh, only in the Is there a need for a president for then, nothing though? Else, well, if for nothing else but to hold accountable all the other people who were voting in office. Like, if think about it. If we could have voted in or out the the members not only of, of you know, in, sitting in Washington, D.C., but the people who could actually put them in prison, the people who could actually, you know, print money, the people, like, if all of those roles are the things that, if you don't, we don't like you in four years, you're gone. Um, yeah. And all of these things worked on cycles. Um, yes, the people could all choose the wrong person occasionally, but it's not likely that if we have to vote for all of these things, it's not likely that we're going to coordinate enough to vote for all of the wrong people at the same time. It's very likely that we're going to get some right and some wrong over time, but we'll change them out so and, and we'll fix it. Maybe because this makes me think, like, if I... No, <laughs> if I'm Sorry, aware, I shouldn't say remembering. Uh, I don't know if it's a matter of memory, but, uh, you know, I understand that the founding fathers wanted uh, to avoid like a monarchy and a king and, and the concept of a king yeah. and or queen. Uh, and therefore, they the best they could come up with was like the balance of powers. And they got this executive like a unitary executive so to speak a single person at the top but it seemed kind of begrudging right like almost like well what else are we going to do but we'll put limits on their power and they can be impeached and stuff well what if you just get rid of it and everything is a group kind of like you're saying and you just say okay there's like a secretary of state a secretary of defense let's say like six to ten or twelve core you know administration level heads that we do vote for and they together function like like there's a rotating chair or something like that you know what i mean so like one of them has a chairmanship on some level at any given time so if something happens that person you know at least at that period can make certain decisions on their own you know like if there's a attack all of a sudden and you know people aren't in the same room or whatever the chairperson could take certain actions until that was resolved, let's say. Uh, But at the end of the day, they need to function uh, as a group and they're beholden to the electorate every X amount of time. 
maybe there is no need. What if that's the next American experiment is just getting rid of that figurehead, that person? Like, we don't need a monarch. We don't need a president. That's just done. You know what I mean? Like, we're we're the first to just say we don't have one of those. You know, when other countries go, hey, we want to introduce our prime minister to the head. So what happens if, to pull this full circle? Somebody proposes that, look, since we're doing all this anyway, why don't we just start creating an AI to make these decisions and we'll vote on the changes to the AI over time. Well, I mean... So that if we find the right person, we can keep them. If we find the right AI, okay. the right model that we all like, we can just keep them. They don't, they don't have to get old and die. That might be an iteration of it. I think that wouldn't be... Well, at the yeah, same I time mean, as the, you know, first stepping away from the singular person. But Here's what the AI needs to do. This is what my first request is. Catalog every human on the planet who desires to be cataloged and find a way to provide them with 2,000 calories a day of whatever foods are available, but they get 2,000 delivered to them wherever they are. Over three times during the day, here's a lunch pack that just comes to your desk at noon. Here's your breakfast that fucking knocks on your door at 9 in the morning whenever you want it. Here's your dinner that's served hot at 6.30. Like, whatever the AI needs to put together to make that work across the globe, then I might trust the motherfuckers a little bit. But I like, like, let's start with feeding humanity. Everybody who opts in on, like, I want food gets fed. And then let's make sure we cover shelter. Like, then let's make sure AI handles shelter for every human that wants shelter. Then let's make, like, this is what AI should be fucking working on instead of how, how to hack us all more fucking money or those of us who have money to make capital gains. Like, ugh. where well, most AI is spent right now is either on replacing really cheap labor so that you don't have to deal with benefits yeah. for people that you already don't really respect. Yeah. Um, or, it's on military, you know, kind of functions, or now it's gigantic data trying to sell you shit. Yeah. Well, one it's way or another, I, I, I think that all is fun, but I, I, I still think we might be onto something with uh, getting rid of the the executive, the yes, single person like executive, mm -hmm. and and having uh, uh, election for the cabinet heads. And just well, it just be a matter of figuring out which of the ones because then so, other departments can still exist and fall under other ones. You know, yeah, what exactly. I mean? That's exactly. So look, we got the Department of Agriculture, the Department of Commerce, the Department of Defense, the Department of Education, the Department of Energy, the Department of Health and Human Services, the Department of Homeland Security, the Depa Department of Housing and Urban Development, the Department of the Interior, the Department of Justice. The Department of Labor, the Department of State, the Department of Transportation, Department of the Treasury, Department of Veteran Affairs. Um, that's it. That's all of them. That's like ten. I know. And so, like within that, no like, Department of Information. No. So then, so the Defense has there was education, National right? Security Agency, Marines, Air Force, Army. Um, the Department of Justice has. Uh, FBI. I don't know who's got the CIA. They don't have. Nobody has them. They're nobody, they're, they're, they're their own. own. Yeah, they yeah, are. Yeah, they're very top. Yeah. They're because yeah they well, they're not an executive agency. They're I think this FCC. no they are though because the, the the president appoints the head of the CIA. Uh, oh really? okay yeah, but but where's the FCC? It's also on there, you know. But but look, I think like, you're onto it, man. It's like look, you can have you don't even need to know the names of the existing ones to do this yeah, equation, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think. Yeah. Because you can just say there's like a matter of self-defense, you know, yeah. which might in some cases historically be seen as offense, or maybe in many cases, but hopefully in the future it would be more about like national defense, you know. Then there's like, you got to deal with the intelligence and spies and you know, all that stuff. You got to have satellites and all that stuff looking yeah. down on the earth. I mean, give me a break. You're going to do it. Like, so yeah, we're gonna do there's, it. there's like a spy thing. There's a military thing. 
there's like the welfare of the people, which you might want to break up into multiple things like food, clothing, shelter, education, healthcare, yeah. or yeah. maybe not. I don't know. It depends. Uh, because well, they kind I of think it's just hair right and now. skin. And we just break it down to hair and skin. It's pretty like the Department of Hair and the Department <clears throat> of Skin. Uh, those ones would be. There's nothing out. else that you really need. But. Uh, education. Um, yeah, well, that's like the welfare kind of, or yeah. human well being. Yeah, there's so, protecting, and then there's the Department of State. So our diplomatic yeah. status with the rest of the world, that's a big and important. It would be the one of the biggest in this new thing because yeah. these are the ones, you know. So defense deals with everything military related and spies and everything of that nature. Am I right? Yeah, let's break it down to like four or five. Yeah, I think okay. I'm feeling that. And then state deals with every interaction we have with other nations and other no. diplomacies. They have like the that. spies too. State has their own spies. I, I think just the spies. I like that. They get all the spies. The military Ugh. shouldn't really have. They should learn every, everything through the spy people if they I like, want. I feel like they do all right at spying too, though. Oh, they're you good think, at it. It's yeah. that's the whole problem. Maybe is you no, know I maybe know. they're too motivated. It's not shoot their... ourselves in the foot to spite our hands. Like so, you want to keep the spies over there? All right. Let's I want to keep, keep spies, spies wherever we need to keep spies. Like, tuck them into the Department of Education. Just to oh, make are I we think... really going to know where they are anyway? There's spies. Yeah, there's We spies. are, because we're designing the whole thing. Yeah. If we don't uh, know, then they don't. But if they're any good at it, they're going to be hiding, is my point. I know, but <clears> we're <throat> assigning them. Well, then you got... Then you got can I, can I propose saying... a Department of Self-Improvement? I like that. Yeah, and it and seems... it's, it's got to focus on usefulness, being useful... Oh, wow. What does that mean? Being cooperative. To this being doesn't useful sound to like, others. I don't know if being I like cooperative. This. I feel like there should be a, a, a department useful. like designed around people being involved in some way. I feel so that like, uh, for sure, uh, in the sense of like some degree of like maybe compulsory service or or I mean I always said voting should be mandatory. So and Bjorn was not a fan of that. So I don't know how easy of a sell he's going to I'm not talking about in. mandatory. I'm talking about education. I'm talking about, like, teaching people how to do it. But but you got a department of being useful. Yeah. And then <laughs> what happens if you choose to be unuseful? Like, is that if just you okay? You don't get our services. All right. Well, I think I hear the spirit. It's like, if you're, you're not a threat to Homeland Security, then you don't have to interact with Homeland Security. All right. You know, you don't need help being useful. You never have to act interact. Uh, there's the rub, right? If you don't need anyway, uh, noted. So I think what we got to look at is is pretend that the country is a person. It's got to know karate. It's <laughs> got to have glasses on. You know what I mean? It's got to know how to. It's got to have some like street smarts as well as regular smarts. It's got to be industrious. Good. Yeah. It's got to look good. Uh, yeah. It's gonna smell good. Uh, that smell goes different for every. Yeah, I mean, sometimes weird. I like my own scent. Yeah, our country. Maybe so, but the country could smell like hodgepodge fumes, you know, or I'd it could say smell it good. probably does. Right, yeah. so that's why you want to look out for the Maybe. smell. Yeah, and blood. Well, and also just exhaust, you know. I mean, if the United States was a human, what would it look like? Oh gosh, that'd be Trump. scary. Yeah, thank you. That's the whole problem. He's the caricature of every negative American trait. He's and literally like like if a cartoon cartoonist from like the early 20th century were just doing a political cartoon of a caricature of the ugliest things of America, they could have prophetically drawn Trump with the just awful everything, awful clothes, awful hair, awful yeah. attitude like Yeah. Entitlement, belligerence. You guys ever use like a video game where you can design a character? Yes. You know, and it like sometimes they have like a randomized button. Trump is like if there was a button for just just use the worst of every like yeah just, just use the him... worst selection. Slide all the sliders to yeah, zero to the bottom. To suck. Yeah. Right. Like normally they start you at neutral, but you can mm -hmm. actually go backwards. Yeah. Uh, well, anyway, I'm really into this thing where the people elect the department heads. I gotta say, I think we just cracked the code. You're welcome, America. You so, can consider this episode yeah. like the Federalist it's worth, Podcast. It's worth the money. 
you so know, here's here's papers? my one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I got Nobody seven here. Um, but Federal I'm curious cast. about justice, the Department of Justice. Nah, it's overrated. Does do we need to give the Department of Justice to like? I, it needs first to go talk to the Department of Usefulness. Well, <laughs> uh, I, I feel I, like I feel like what if it is completely separated from the executive branch? <clears throat> what if the Department of Justice is just tied in with the Supreme Court that also has appointments that are run a little bit different, that has its own full way that it operates that's isolated from the executive branch? No, it's just totally like the Department of everything, not even part of the Supreme Court. The people still like elect it the way they do the other department heads, but it it's like got to check on everything too. Yeah, you know what okay. I mean. Almost like it's just us. Yeah. <laughs> so so you elect the the uh, secretary or the attorney general, uh, and that person serves independently to make sure that justice is being delivered fairly. And that nobody's fucking around. That's the president. Is the attorney general? Yeah, the new president is. No, the there can't be. We, we don't want a president. I'm telling you. Just made don't. That's what I'm saying, though. This person that has a new set of slightly overarching multi um, uh, elements to the to the government, like arms. This the person who's heading the DOJ, more so than any of these other executive agencies. So they're the new, the executive is supposed to be the executor of justice and upholding the laws of the land anyways. So the Department of Justice's head is that president. Like, he's executing the laws that have been handed down. Yeah, but I'm saying we don't even want a single person anymore. We're past that, you know. But, but I'm you, saying the person who's the, the attorney general is the I know. new... That's basically the role of president. So there's I no know, president. Then, the there's no way. president. Yeah. But the attorney general has a higher set of powers than maybe his other agency heads or her. What if, can I ask? Can I you ask? See what I'm saying? An observation. I think I see where you're flood, going. The floodcast may have unlocked this a long time ago. Yeah. In the very. That, in the sense that there are three of us. Right. Um. So what if we're thinking about this the wrong way? that we're still thinking in terms of department heads as individuals and each of those individuals representing a department as one group. But why would each of those individuals contain the role and then we expect to build this solution for individual power? If you're the individual department head of any department, you still have to power over that department. What if three people held the role for each one of those departments? Okay. They have to agree. They have to work together in each one of those roles, right? Yeah. There's not one de Secretary of State. There are three of them, and they okay. have to work together. Here, and here's one here's just here's a point. Answer. Diminishing efficiencies. No, no, but here's here's the here's the rub or the trick. It's not a rub. I think a rub is bad, and the trick is good. I'm not sure. Uh, <laughs> this is the beauty of it. You're working with the threes, therefore terms are three years, therefore. and they're staggered. So. This year, you vote for one of the three, right? There and he's or he or she is working with uh, the two existing ones. One of them who's going to be on their way out, and one of them who just got there, right? And so it's going to always be a rolling thing. So the people don't have to vote for three heads of every department. No, it's just because that's going to be a year. lot every year, just once. You know yeah. what I mean? And so, I love it. yeah, everything's on this. Just keep it moving level. You know what I mean? Uh, and, and I no think one can ever to... be the like the ultimate end all be all of any department. Right. And I think when it comes to the Congress, uh, maybe even both chambers, we need to be more on a, a approval. Like like the term limit should just be right. when you're when you suck, when you've you're just satisfied people enough, like the vote of no confidence, basically. You know what I mean? Like like on some level you have like, let's say I have voted i've got confidence in my representative right um i have the opportunity every night to say i have to change right. my vote to no confidence right. or it can stay where it's at i can keep it at no confidence right 
but then if I change my mind, I could move it back to confidence. But if at any point the the critical mass is reached where the people have said they don't have confidence in that representative or that person, they're just done. And I love that. And there's just someone else like either waiting in the wings or a process to bring the next person in. You know what I mean? But okay, we just so need to get we uh, need to make this shit snappy. That's the whole yeah, fucking problem. This is all nonsense. We're all sitting yeah. here like, well, I don't know, in like four years we'll talk about it after like right. a fucking two oh, year propaganda campaign of lies. Yeah. You know, yeah, we don't want to step on any election year, so we wanna, you know, get these proceedings done and you know, if it doesn't work now, I don't know if it'll ever work. Yeah. Has set up set this up, you know, the entire Trump family is set up with wealth and opportunity for the next fucking twenty millennia from the last two years while we're scrambling around to figure out if we can prove this bozo is a bozo. Yeah. Well, I think we've really made some huge progress here mm-hmm. tonight because I think so what we figured out is the trilateral uh, leadership, which is huge, especially when it's on the, you know, yep. rapid spinning. Yep. It's it's a lot like what Bjorn talked about, where you got the Earth and the solar system, but it's going around a binary star with a dead star. That's the type of government we're trying to build. I kind of you imagine <laughs> a pig roast. Like, you need kind of the three prongs to stick the pig on there. It rotates over the fire. What's it called? A rotisserie. Three prongs. A rotisserie, rotisserie government. Rotisserie, yeah. Okay. Oh, it's not a democracy. It's a rotisserie. Uh, it's pretty like strong. That. Yeah. Okay. But um, I think I think we've really... Be. I mean, this is something... Someone should draw this up. One of the Vlodcast nations it. should do a chart. Get this so, stuff. Yeah, well, defense, health, state... The economy, which is like, you know, treasury and commerce, etc. Getting shit done. Um, interior, Department of, uh, you know, um, all agriculture. Everything at home. Everything. Yeah. Everything. What about moving then you could separate. What about the department for moving I think around? it'd be nice to have health, education, and food separated. Like what about Department of Agriculture. <clears throat> Well, and then housing and urban development would be the main purview, perhaps, of the interior. What about the Department of the Interior? I don't know. Or you could break housing Cars out. And travel. Transportation at is its own thing. Day, but moving, walking, and stuff. At the end of the day, if you got a food department, you don't need agriculture, too. Because, it, you know, what the food department is trying to make sure everybody gets fed, right? The agricul- yeah, but agriculture the thing- is also feeding our food. <laughs> Whatever the case, you don't because it it's a means to an end, right? The end is to feed people. You got and then what we're also trying to do is create jobs and money and all this different stuff. You compartmentalize this stuff too much, and then people are making corn for no reason. Like we're producing a crazy amount of corn because the agriculturalist side of things just needs that. But it doesn't serve society, right? No, like, no, 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 no. They, they should be tied in together. Like the Department of Agriculture saying. should be under the purview of the Department of Food, Commerce, food, you know, or, or no. necessity. Well, yeah, yes and no. I think food, food's so important that yes, anything that isn't covered by food, though, like so, food says the Department of Food. They say we need this much corn to eat, right? <clears throat> Yeah. Any corn produced not for that is a whole different story by different people in a different way, if even that's that. Department of Energy, which yeah, is right, exactly. So, how but how I think that's that more control? like commerce because, in a way, it's like <clears throat> aside from what we're doing to eat, everything we're producing, whether it be a food or a microchip, is about how we sustain commerce, really. You know what I mean? Like, like, and you want to be nimble. Setting yourself up. I think there should be a department of produce. (laughs) No, department of avocados. No, no, no. I mean, like produce, as in anything that you grow from the earth, right? Anything that you produce from the ground. We're managing it this way. So gold. Yep. Sure. Gold. Diamonds. Corn. Whatever. Anything that's coming out of the earth. Oil. Oil. Whatever. Fossils. If you're pulling shit out of the world, yeah, right. We're dealing with it in this this way because there's resources that we're pulling off the planet, or we're using resources to generate them, or whatever. You yeah. think about it that way. 
and then we branch down for what all you're affecting when you produce this thing. Oh, I, I just changed it all. Oh. Hold on, update. Department you gotta garbage. you gotta just get a new because page. none of those departments currently deal with global warming. Yeah, they have to have some overview. Exactly. They don't. That's they don't not have to deal even with enough. anything in space. Yeah, they don't deal with like you know. Department of Space. Oh fuck. Maybe Meshack. look, I've I've changed it what all. What about the Department of the Future in the past, guys? Oh, that's we're missing all kinds of shit. Truth, look, time, and foreverness. But everything is gonna fall under one of six things. So it's like I like it so far. You got mind. Yeah, count me in. So you got the mind, the yeah, Department yeah, right. of Mind, and it's it's both. It's like mental health, but it's also the the intelligence, the the direction of the country, education, body and soul, right? In but then you have soul. earth, earth, wind, and and fire and water. <laughs> <laughs> so seven, earth, wind, fire, water. Uh, uh, because you need to look out for the water. You need to look out for the air, the earth, and the fire is important, I think. That's <laughs> Maybe we don't need right? the fire. Maybe well, no, we just that, earth, the, the wind, water. Is, the fire is the I department thought... of energy. That's electricity and anything that's like... Um, yeah. You know, you're burning. You're using one resource to generate elect, you know, energy for another and resource. Missiles. They come from the okay. Department of Fire. So, mind, body, soul, earth, wind, fire, air. And air right. is the department Water. of like outer space. It's space, pollution, flight, it's, pollution yeah, the whole thing, all yeah. that, everything associated with air. And water includes so, probably the nasal. So what about what about tunnels? Oh, that's earth. Wind tunnels? is air. Yeah, earth, wind, wind air. fire, water. Earth, wind, fire, water, body, soul, mind. Yeah, and that's all you need because from there you just branch out. We're good. Yeah, after that we're good. Seven parts. So what's in? So what's in? Um, soul. Soul is education. Soul no, that's is mine. joy. That's no, mine. I think I think soul is about like joy, arts, and yep. art, art, and, like fulfillment. family. Yeah, yeah, like all the all the warm and fuzzy stuff is soul. Purpose, meaning. All that stuff is soul. Department of usefulness is definitely in there. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. The department of getting <laughs> shit somewhere else. But I, so, I, yeah, I think this is totally. So where's the department of defense? Earth. Uh, Earth. Wind, but, mind, oh, body. Body. No, I think I think they all have to have defenses. No. Well, that's because the water defense, the air defense, that's one way to do it. I like that. But I think body is is it because if you think about it. What are you That's protecting? the physical. That's the physical part. Right, you're protecting right? your physical body. But the mind department has so not intellectual the territory and spies. That's up in the mind. Yeah. And the body is the kinetic. Well, yes, we depart. We, we protect the territory. And the soul is the cultural apart. warfare. Where we where we decide what the like what the Department of Defense is covering and what, what we're defending and how we do it. Where did we Someone, strategize? Someone's going to need to write up a quick new constitution. Which one of you guys is on that? I'm into it. Okay. Right. Yeah. Cool. I tried to just delegate it. Like oh, it was done. Yeah. <clears throat> I got nothing. But we will probably need need a new uh, constitution to make this all run smooth. I like it. Seven pages. Easy. Oh, that's a long one. I was thinking one nice page. One big well, it's one. One page per you know department. We're good. We make it a little description. It could be double spaced. Yeah, easy. Oh, courier font and everything. Yeah, totally. All right, I can see that. Uh, and it'll be spoken. It'll be. Uh, it'll be a speaking constitution. Right. So Ooh. it talks in Benjamin Franklin's voice, <laughs> which we know what it sounds like because <laughs> you know, uh, time. Is... <laughs> oh, the Department oh, of Department time. of Time. Damn. Oh. That's probably the you most important. I forgot about yeah. that dimension, Bob. So Space we might have to have like a poll. I brought up future and past. You did. Yeah. That's true. Would they fall under the Department of Time? I think, we ha I think they would have to. And does oh. the Department of Present oh. deal with gifts as well? Ooh, now that now we're talking. Does yeah. double, do do double entendres have double <laughs> departments? Yeah. What about, <laughs> what, about, what about the Department of Love? The Department of Sorrow, truth. the Department of Anger, the Department of Fear, the Department of Truth, the Department of Bravery. Well, that's... I don't know about like, all that. What about taking it to that's an emotional state? Well. I think that's all in the Department of Soul. 
I think in 1984, all the departments were uh, alternate or opposite of what they well, were supposed to be. Yeah, that's like yeah, that. but like the Department of Truth was actually the Department yeah. of Lies, you know. Media. So I worry about that slippery slope. But I do say we've completely evolved past a singular president. I mean, that's done. We we finished that like an hour ago. We've, we've gone, been we've, we've been putting the frosting like, on this cake. Yeah, you know, like, shiny future for sure. Yeah, America, you're welcome. You know what I mean? The Flodcast Nation is known, but now America will know. Well, and the great thing about it is. The candidates for each of these positions will be able to can like campaign on a really particular message set. Like, look, I don't care what you have to say about education, Mrs. Person who's running for Department of Energy. You literally Secretary, can't do anything you know what about I mean? it. Exactly. That's not <laughs> under your purview. Yeah. Like you, let's you hear just, what you have to say about biofuels and solar right. and you know battery capacities, et cetera. And, and, how you're and also, outside of that, how you're yeah. gonna co collaborate so, with the two other guys who are in there right now. Yeah. And who are going to be? Yeah. The... What's your cooperation look like? Yeah. Now, is there an argument to be made for these candidates only to be revealed a couple days before the election? Uh, no arguments. I'm, were you going to make an argument <laughs> for it? <laughs> well, I was just wondering. I had I was thinking out loud, but I'm thinking on the one hand, when you have these year long, well, you look at other countries like the United Kingdom. It seems like they'll be like, yeah. oh. We're having an election next week. Yeah, it was this guy. Oh, it's fucking Nigel something, and he's fucking prime minister. <laughs> Featherbone. You know what I mean? Just like that. Uh, over something. here, we talk about this shit for like so long that the person who wins is basically just the one that's like the. I, I don't even want to say least nauseating, but it's just like somebody who somehow we could bear hearing about that much. But I guess that hasn't proven to be true. But anyway. Uh, I mean, because Trump certainly was the opposite God. of that. Oh, yeah. Uh, but nonetheless, you, you feel me. You know where I'm going with that. I mean, we wanted yeah. a train wreck. We got a train wreck. Apparently, we, we wanted did. it. We got it, yeah. We said, you know, the train tracks are fucking cool. Yeah, they're way too organized. what happens when you just go off of those? <laughs> yeah. and Trains got like, wheels. It can keep going. We're using monorail right. now. It'll be fine. We'll, breathe. Uh, we'll figure out how to breathe on the water when we get there. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess we'll have to write a constitution. Um, we're gonna have to get a couple of the kinks worked out. I say voting should be mandatory, but we can talk. No. About it. No. We can talk about it. Yeah. We're still gonna have. We're still gonna we'll have those. Continue talking about. You it. You didn't even get. Bishak's over here talking about the Department of Usefulness, and you're like, "Oh, it sounds interesting." <laughs> but if we have to vote, fuck that. Don't the make Department me vote. Department of Usefulness. Out. I mean, <laughs> that was his I mean, old thing. Is, you can't, uh, you know, you I can't argue that it's it's going to be useful. <laughs> I just think if we're worried about societal overreach, I'm more worried about a department in government that is worried about me if I'm not useful enough versus just saying out? everybody needs to speak up when the time what comes. What if it's that's, voted that's America's was... favorite department 20? 94. I was thinking it was like a bit really benevolent thing. Yeah, me too. didn't have like big brother overtones in that sense. Like, I want to believe that, but what it if sounds the other way scary. around, Rob. What if it's that the department is supposed to be useful? To the well, that would be sweet. And it's, it's like, a department how can it's meant to just ask be not like how the department America's of butler. Right. You know what the statement would be? Ask not what you can do for the Department of Usefulness. Ask what the Depart Department of Usefulness can do for you. There well, you I've the figured department. out what they mainly do is run the goddamn elections. There That's you. their that usefulness. That would be super useful. That would be helpful. We need help on that. <laughs> super useful Department of Usefulness. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we'll be having a lot so more. It's we your welcome. Elections all the time. I will say this, uh, just in closing support of the whole concept i voted for the like water district commissioner around here yeah, yeah i don't know anything about that shit and i guarantee most of my neighbors don't either but when the ballot came we got to choose between two different people who were saying how they'd manage water like why can't we just up that to federal level and start talking about the people who are going to be managing real, right? war? Like, you know we also need to manage garbage Mm. I'd say the best way to do that, that pretend it doesn't exist. Me too. 
I mean, that's my strategy. Yeah, just just close your eyes and ears and make it go away, kind of thing. La la la. Do my best. The la la la. Yeah, here we come. Yeah. Dig it. We're out of time, well, boys. Yeah, gents. Yeah, but we made a powerful contribution. It was pretty good. It was yeah. pretty powerful. I'm really uh, proud. So, Bjorn, we'll see the, we'll see the first draft of the Constitution next week, and we'll uh, dive into it from there. Oh, I'll probably yeah, get we'll, it to we'll your email it. inboxes by later this evening. Yeah, can we okay. get that on parchment, please, Perfect. in quill pen? Yeah. I'm gonna you have it. those. You can print it on that. But <laughs> I don't know how well, to actually, send a parchment email. <laughs> uh, it'd be nice if you would. <laughs> Parchment email, please. Oh, well, that'd be a really awesome option. If it had like a wax seal mm-hmm. on it too, and you like, it was a secret code, fingerprint code to unwrap it. Ooh, With three D printers, it's nothing. I like that. Let's start using scrolls and pigeons. Yeah, I'd say, so and you can print, print up a pigeon. Pigeons. Let's print a pigeon right. and print a scroll. Yep. And send All it right. To me. Well, we don't want to disrupt society even more than we already have. This is like a lot to take in one episode. Big so, yeah, but I, I'm I'm again very proud and excited for the future and for the Constitution you're writing. Me too. I'll let you know. Uh, we'll just send it over on DocuSign. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, for I'm sure. For the- All right, Johnny Hancock. <laughs> <laughs> All right, boys. Fairly right. well. Peace. Salutations. Peace.